Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is going to be a Celtic Cross spread for the week ahead. I am recording this on Sunday, September 18th, but this, you know, whenever you find this, this is going to resonate for you. It's just that there is a wave of us going through this energy right now, and anyone else can be hitting this, this similar type of wave of energy at any other time. It's interesting. I haven't done a Celtic Cross spread for these weekly readings yet, but I really <laughs> felt like that was the only thing for me to do this week. I think last week I didn't even draw cards. I was just like rambling uh, <laughs> right? because I didn't feel like drawing any cards. But this week I want to like focus directly on the cards. I almost feel like I don't want to say anything without cards. So a complete switch from last week. Very interesting. <laughs> Let me get the cards out and then we'll see what is up for us this week, whenever you see this. <laughs> well, there we go. Uh, first card out is the tower. Uh, <laughs> let me, um, let me just get all the cards out before I, uh, before I talk about this. I just have to laugh. Page of Wands is the challenge, the crossing card here, to grab your magic wand, to grab life by the balls, I would even say. Crowning position, the spiritual journey card is the Knight of Pentacles. Recent past, Seven of Cups. So the confusion, and especially if it's been any type of confusion that has resulted from having too many options just just being not sure which way to go that is fading into the past i'm assuming some kind of tower moment is coming through to kind of clear out that past confusion so that's actually pretty good i'm always actually pretty excited to see the tower card because it means that like it's time for change to manifest into the material reality that's what the tower is in its essence right change is materializing into the physical world, it, it's happening, and it's going to be ref a reflection of our inner work, and it's going to just be erupting into the physical world in a surprising way, right? A surprising way. King of Swords in the near future, so you're going to be feeling on top of this, right? King of Swords is completely balanced, complete, uh, and like quite objective. The, the King of Swords, it's like no matter what this tower moment is, you you have like the emotional chops to handle it. I don't see, <laughs> I don't actually see like with the cards coming out so far. Um, actually, well, let, let me let me just get all the cards out first because I don't want to get ahead of myself. I feel like I want to watch the cookie crumble here. Queen of Cups down here in the the deep past, the Akashic position. So again, that speaks to that emotional uh, stability, right? The Queen of Cups is very sensitive and emotional and intuitive, but she knows how to deal with her emotions. She knows how to handle them. She has that emotional maturity. So here you are, each of us individually moving into a new world. External environment, Seven of Pentacles. That's the same, Seven of Pentacles and the Knight of Pentacles, very similar energy, taking it slow, taking it steady. Um, but here, since this is the environment, is the Seven of Pentacles, something is coming to, something is coming to fruition, but it might not fruit this week, right? This is like, literally, there are, there is apples on the tree. <laughs> your tree, your fruit tree has been growing and the apples are on the fruit tree, um, but they might not be ready to harvest quite yet this week, but just know that they are growing, that they are growing, that they are growing. That is an interesting thing to get um, along with the tower card. So let's find out hopes and fears. The Empress, fear of stepping up, fear of leadership, and yet that is exactly what you desire. The thing I love about the Celtic cross spread is how hopes and fears is represented by one card because the thing we desire most can often be the thing that we fear the most. So this is, and it's interesting because this is the Empress. So I, th I think that this materialization, the thing you are materializing, 
that you desperately want it to materialize, but you also kind of fear it. So th this could be, um, I mean, with the Empress, right? This is you embodying the Empress energy and that is what you're doing. It is what you want to do is what you're striving to do, but there's something about it that is a little intimidating. This could play out in so many ways, right? Someone's starting up their own business. That's what you want, but you're also a little afraid of it because it feels like you're, you're going beyond your comfort zone. Somebody starting a new job, especially if it's a job where you're you're stepping up, right, um, into a hot, like if you've gotten a promotion, right, um, or you have, like your job is challenging and it feels outside of your comfort zone. There you go, right? Same thing to stepping up into spiritual leadership or maybe you're, you're, you're materializing something like physically, like buying a car, buying a house, moving, right? Any, anything where it's this leveling up, you fear the leveling up, you desire the leveling up. Um, so, the, so really, um, the tower is clearing the way for you to do this leveling up. Let's find out what the outcome card is before I speak any further. Three of pentacles. <laughs> You're going to have all the help, assistance, and guidance that you need. Everything's going to be fine. There's even going to be some stepping stones here. Stepping up these cans, opening up the window. And look at this, this cat literally climbs the stairway to heaven, opens the window, goes through the portal, and goes into the light. This cat is literally going through the portal into the light. You see how he opens the window and goes into the sunshine? So, beautiful beautiful outcome card here it's <laughs> this this is your leveling up liter literally like walking out into the light you, you are climbing the stairway to heaven you are leveling up in your physical life and it's, it's see because the three of pentacles is even though this has a very spiritual message on the, like the way this card is depicted right literally walking up the stairway of heaven into going out into the portal into the light but it is also a, like three of pentacles which is very very material so this is your material leveling up this is your your manifestation um and i think the the only thing here it's like the the tower the tower is your fears right the tower moment is your fears maybe you fear the collision <laughs> okay this is a really funny example uh, do you guys all remember Seinfeld? I'm assuming everybody remembers Seinfeld, right? <laughs> There's an episode where George is talking about the worlds are colliding because he has his his world where he, he hangs out with his friends and then he has his girlfriend world, right? Friend world and girlfriend world. Friend world and girlfriend world. And he doesn't want his girlfriend to meet his friends because then the worlds are colliding. The worlds are colliding, Jerry. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing in my head. The worlds are colliding, right? He doesn't want the worlds to collide because then suddenly... Like, because he is a different person when he's with his girlfriend than when he's with his friends, right? I think most of us can relate to that. We're, we're, we present different sides of ourselves when we're with our partner, when we're with our friends, when we're with our family, when we're at work. We have all these multiple parts to ourselves. And of course, that is just the grounded physical thing on a much deeper spiritual level. We have so many aspects to ourselves, right? Especially like for, for star seeds, for old soul star seeds, we have so many levels to our consciousness and a lot of them we're not even aware of um, different like star systems we've lived in, different type of soul paths we've walked. Um, for some people, this is very, very, uh, like this can include very deep shadow work here where maybe you have identified yourself as a being of pure love and light. Maybe you have thought of yourself as someone who has only ever incarnated in these like love and light civilizations and maybe this week you're finding out you're realizing it's coming to you one way or another um where you're remembering lives where maybe you were kind of dark side right maybe you, you also have had shadow lives so for some people this could be tuning into their shadow lives for the first time and that can be very difficult and it's not necessarily that it's like oh big bad shadow lives because along with this understanding however this is playing out for you right um you know, maybe it's just a past life where you realize like, oh, I did something I kind of regret from that past life. Or I remember this past life where I just, I made a horrible mistake. It could be like that. Or it could be a past life where you were, were truly like dark side, right? Um, but w with integrating these kind of shadow lives or shadow experiences, this includes things from your past where maybe you re regret something that you've done in the past. Um, but, but it's coming into an understanding. The ultimate understanding here is that, This is like breaking the binary of good and evil, breaking the binary of light and shadow, <laughs> right? The worlds are colliding and understanding that it is all just you. And in all of your lives, 
regardless of how that life has played out, it's always just been you. It's always been your soul walking its path and you've always just been walking your path to the best of your ability. And those lives, even if you've made horrible mistakes, done things that you feel are horrible, or if you've been really dark side in some of your lives, that was still you navigating that life to the best of your ability, right? And, and you can't actually control. There's probably something here about realizing that even if you have done something you regret, it was kind of beyond your control, right? The way things spiraled, it was like you were just trying to live <laughs> your life and things spiraled out of control and there were these n like negative, undesirable repercussions, consequences, and th there needs to be an understanding here that it was beyond your control and that it, these things are always beyond your control, right? You cannot control how anything is um, how anything plays out after you act, right? You cannot control how things play out after you act. So there's, um, that's why I'm talking like breaking the binary. The, the, this is a, like a theme that has been coming up in so many readings and I've been seeing this coming up in so many private readings. Um, it, it's just... <sighs> I feel that if you have, um, like from what I've actually been seeing personally, um, like for myself and for people that I know and in private readings, anybody with um, like Capricorn energy and Scorpio energy is from just what I've seen, this isn't necessarily like the be all end all of this, but I have just noticed a trend among the people that I've connected with, right? That Capricorns and Scorpios can uh, like navigate this energy a little more naturally because that's kind of this kind of um, navigating the shadow is sort of kind of like an area of expertise for Capricorn and for Scorpio, right? Um, other energy like, like Taurus can get into more black and white thinking, right? Cancer can be more um, really like highly, highly sensitive to things that it perceives as dark or evil. Aries can just want to like fight <laughs> anything that feels like a threat. So the, it's it's just the different ways that different energies kind of react to these type of themes. So I feel like it could really vary. For some of you, this could be like, oh yeah, I kind of I kind of get this. I can go with this. I'm really like comfortable with my shadow, and I, I kind of understand the like the bigger picture and like the the unification process of light and shadow. Um, for some people, this could be deeply deeply traumatic, right? So there's a whole spectrum here about how you could be feeling about this. Um, and maybe you've been confused about how to feel about this, right? With the Seven of Cups, maybe you've been confused, right? Maybe if you've like come to been trying to come to terms with something that you did that you don't like, that you wish you could change, right? Maybe you've been beating yourself up about it. Um, but this is really a really, really huge shift because when you resolve this inside of yourself, when you break this binary of good and evil of light and shadow inside of yourself and realize that it's all just you existing, then think about how that ripples out to the collective. That is like a massive karmic forgiveness. Okay. That is like massive, massive karmic forgiveness. And of course this doesn't, um, you know, so I've been kind of talking about how this plays out internally. Um, but of course this can be absolutely be playing out between you and someone else where maybe, you know, Maybe you, you are facing someone who has done you wrong, has harmed you, or maybe you're um, uh, dealing with past lives where you were a victim of someone who, you know, victimized you, who, who did harm to you, right? Uh, and so it could be playing out that way externally where um, you're coming to terms, like starting to understand their perspective, starting to understand why they are the way they are, starting to understand their path, their journey, and reaching that kind of higher level source perspective where you realize that we are all one consciousness and consciousness includes all spectrums of consciousness and it is all just part of the one, all just part of the all, and that all needs to exist. And that the kind of black and white good and evil thinking, it just... It, it, the, the black and white thinking that most humans have experienced, it's like partially just an, uh, like an experience of human life on earth. And it is also kind of a PTSD kind of side effect of having experienced such like long-term deep soul trauma, right? If you're an old soul star seed, which almost all of you watching this are, you your soul has experienced so much trauma to the point where your soul at some point in its journey like was broken, like broken 
Um, what, what do I mean by that? Because I, I want to be clear. I mean that at some point your soul experienced so much pain that it lost the source perspective. It lost the source perspective of unity. It lost the source perspective of uh, like all is good or at least this, the perspective of all is neutral and it became so hurt and, and pain and the pain echoed out through the pain echoed out through your soul to the point where you ended up with this black and white thinking and you ended up with this good and evil type of thinking. So the good news here is this, this week is essentially um, healing from that. You, you, like you, you, in order to rise above the, this binary, this, this duality in order to overcome the black and white thinking, overcome the good and the good and evil type of thinking. Um, really, like, you can't do that without receiving this type of healing, like, right, without receiving this soul healing, without completing this kind of karmic cycle. So um, th this actually feels like a huge big deal <laughs> because it's like the original wound that your soul experienced has potential to be healed this week if you allow it to, if you're ready for it, if you're ready for it. If you're not ready for it, then this will spiral back around and you will receive this healing, experience this healing at some other point and you will synchronize with this whenever you are ready for it. So you can be experiencing this in spirals, right? But there is potential here for like your, your soul's original wound to be healed this week or maybe for the first, for the first step of this healing process to happen, right? Maybe it's going to play out for you over many years. Maybe it's going to be completed this week, right? It, it, it just depends on how you want to roll with this. But, and when when you fully heal this original wound, this is like way back in your soul's history, right? Like way back in like your first quote unquote, like, um, like planet that you lived on, right? Um, not that there's really a first, because typically we're we're living parallel quantum lives, and all of our lives are kind of taking place over you know non-linear time. But we all pretty much have like a like there is a sense, there is an impression, like from our linear human minds, we can trace our soul back to a kind of origin point that kind of makes sense to the human mind. So it's still it still is okay to think of your soul as having an origin point or like a first planet or a first star system of origin that still is true from one perspective. So it's like from that, like it's like your original fall, right? The original fall. This is like healing from your original fall. Um, and this could be even like not even talking about starseed stuff, not even talking about planet stuff. This is this could be like your original fall that sent you down from source, like that that triggered your fall from the higher realms, right? Whatever sent your soul on the, its dissension cycle, whatever original wound triggered you and sent you down through the spiral down here into density, whatever was the original wound that caused that for you. There's this tower going to come through and it's going to trigger that. So first you're going to have to feel it. First you're going to have to feel it. And I, I, I'm able to speak with such like kind of um, specificity. Is that even a word? I'm able to give specific details like on this because I experienced this yesterday. <laughs> okay. I experienced this literally yesterday. Um, so... I, I've kind of already lived this out and it's gonna I realized that it was gonna be like echoing for me for the rest of the week um, but they're, they're, you're gonna you're gonna be happy having this like trigger right so whatever wound you experienced and it's different for everybody every single person watching this has a different like core wound that triggered their soul's original dissension cycle right but you're gonna feel it you're gonna kind of relive it and this doesn't have to be this doesn't have to be playing out in the physical, really. This doesn't have to be playing out in the physical, um, but it could. It absolutely could. Um, there's just going to be something happen. It could even be you watching a movie and maybe the movie like upsets you so much and you find yourself bawling your eyes out because it makes you feel the wound. This, this is just about something coming through to make you feel this wound, to make you relive it because you have to feel it before you can, before you can like in order for you to understand it, you need to feel it so you can identify it, feel it so you can go, okay, I have learned that lesson and I'm actually, I understand why I experienced that wound. This is like integrating the lesson from the wound and coming full circle, coming full, full circle. This is like literally the wheel has turned all the way back around to the beginning of 
your 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 dissension cycle. Like <laughs> I know this sounds like really big and dramatic, but I, I just I gotta be honest, this is how this is how I feel this. The original wound that happened that sent you on your dissension cycle, you come all the way back around and this week you're gonna feel it. You you're you're gonna process it and you're gonna let it go. Right? You're gonna let it go and you, you're gonna be free of it. But you're gonna have you're gonna be walking away with the lesson learned right walking away with the lesson learned and you're going to be walking out into the light completely free with this brand new fresh start i have nothing to add to that that's where i'm going to leave it guys so good luck <laughs> i love you sending you so much love and light bye